Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Behind the desk, I'm joined by Dr. Normal, and tonight's guest is Brian Westbrook. Why do I always say your name wrong, like, the second you come on my show? You know, somebody last night, uh, we were at Wiffy, somebody said, uh, in- introduced me. I- I've known this guy, followed him online on Twitter. Um, he said, uh, you're Brian Westerbrook, right? Wester. Westerbrook. <laughs> and then so then I had to tell him the story about how my dad once sent a postcard that said, Dear Brain. Was that a compliment? I'm not sure. Dad. So you're forgiven. You're forgiven. But Westbrook. it's Westbrook. I or BMW. I always try to say rest instead of rush, 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 west. Rush, rush, rush. Anyway, this is Brian Westbrook. BMW on Twitter. So much easier need, to just say We need BMW. to get the yeah M in there. And he is the resident gadget man for almost everybody. A little bit. You want to go. You want some gadgets. You're in the Northwest. You should go see Brian. Yeah. yeah. He's the go-to guy. And he has brought us, because it's the holiday season, whether you want it to be or not. Cue the jingle bells. It is the holiday season. Next week is Thanksgiving. After that, everyone's going to go all like, oh my God, what what do I buy? So he's going to tell you some gadgety goodness. I have uh, a bunch of uh, the, the latest video products. We've got mm-hmm. the latest pocket video cameras. They're really hot. They're mm-hmm. you know a couple hundred bucks. They do HD video. And we've got about every single one of the smartphones you could ever want. And I brought a fun little toy for us to play with. It makes a fun little sound effect, so it'll be kind of fun. And uh, it actually charges. And I brought a, a probably the goofiest-looking gadget I've, I've we've seen all year. What should we start with? I think we should start with the video cameras. Okay. Because, uh, you know, I get a lot of people that are asking me, about these little pocket cameras, this is the the Vado HD from Creative Labs. Uh, this is a fun one. This is actually does HD video, mm-hmm. and I like it's got the little neoprene case on it. Um, all of them have the USB port that kind of flips out. Attached. The USB port, it's attached. Nice. You plug it into your computer. They come with the software. The idea, of course, there being that you plug it into your computer and it's mm-hmm. really easy for anyone to use. These are they're great for techie folks. They're also great for the grandparents, the parents, you know, especially if you've got kids running around or you want to kind of capture memories and bring families closer. It's just push button technology. Exactly. It's, you plug it in. You've got the software good to go. Here's a new one from Flip. This is the Flip Minnow HD. So let's take it to this camera, sweetie. Over oh, here. here. Yeah. Right here? There you go. There we go. Look at that. So this is this is the new Flip Minnow HD, and it's smaller than the previous Flip Minnow HDs, mm-hmm. and it also is uh, 120 minutes, so it's a two-hour as opposed to one hour for the previous. Nice. Um, some of them have different features, like this one has a built-in battery, so you can't actually... Uh, you have to recharge it via the USB. You can't plug it in. You can't swap the batteries out. Um, the the The... Full size minnow, the Ultra okay. HD. You can actually change, it, take the batteries out. It's the out same of it. height, but it's about twice the width. Is that? The it's actually this one. Yeah, the the, the two. Yeah. This is the uh, Ultra HD on top and the Minnow HD on the bottom. But what I like about the Ultra HD, for example, is you can slide the back off. If you unlock it, you can slide the back off, and you see we've just got two AA batteries in there. So you can That's actually nice. swap them out. Say you're at Disneyland, you can go yeah. to the gift shop and buy AA batteries as opposed to you know Find where's the charge. USB port? It's yeah. Where's my USB port? Can I plug this in to, to charge it. But so, you can do both. Exactly. You can do both. It actually comes with a rechargeable battery pack. I've just got some Duracells in there now. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also have to unload it when it gets full. So there's another camera that takes the best of both worlds. Uh, and it'll actually, this is the JVC Picasso. It's got, new. I love these little tripods. These are great. There's little those Joby tripods. You can clip them on things. Yeah. If you don't have one of these Joby tripods, this is the ultimate stocking stuffer. Uh, I actually discovered these tripods for my digital SLR, but they're great for these little cameras. You can slide them onto anything. You can put them on the arm of the chair here, if and then you, you can to the record beach video with your family. You can stick them on a driftwood log and yeah. take a picture. They'll stay anywhere. Exactly. They're great for still cameras. They're also great for the video cameras. Mm-hmm. But this camera, what I like about the JVC is, I'll pull it off of here is you can actually take it and plug an SD card into it. Mm -hmm. So it takes a standard SD card, just like your camera might, Mm -hmm. and then you can run video on that. When you're done, when the card is full, you take it out, you plug it in your computer, download the pictures. This does full HD 1080p. Mm -hmm. Now, you're not going to get the world's best quality, and, of course, the problem with these handheld cameras is always this. Here's the thing, though. If you're using one of these little handheld cameras, you're not looking for, like, the highest quality in the world. You're looking to capture something that's happening in the moment. 
Exactly. Uh, you know, I always say about the pocket still cameras, mm -hmm. and the same thing with these video cameras. If you have one with you, you're more likely to get the shot. You're more likely to record video. Yeah. You're more likely to take that picture. And so many times, you're like, oh gosh, I wish I had that shot. I wish I had this moment captured. And you don't have a camera with you, and you're like, oh, you know, we so totally missed out. So better something you can slip in your pocket than have nothing. At and all. even this, even this tripod, you know, it folds up into a bunch of different shapes, but it's fairly compact. And again, you can clamp it to driftwood, you can clamp it to, you know, a street light. I've had it in a number of different places. They also make a version of this camera, uh, of this tripod, the Joby tripod, that works with the big digital SLRs. Mm -hmm. So these, these movable, these bendy balls here are um, larger and so they can actually grasp on to um, different things and, and, and hold more weight, the bigger lens of the camera, that sort of thing. So that's a lot of fun. One final camera, this is the Kodak ZI8. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is, a, this is a new camera by Kodak. They've had a couple of HD cameras out already. Um, this one's got a larger screen, again, 1080p. So we're talking about the higher resolution video. And it also has a direct mode to upload to directly to YouTube and Facebook. Uh, of course, a lot of that is just marketing hype. You know, most of this stuff most goes pretty easily can, up to YouTube yeah. and, and Facebook. But the fact that they put the YouTube and Facebook makes it for the non-techies to realize, oh, I can upload video that I take on my camera to YouTube. How crazy. Yeah. Um, so, and again, it's got the USB port. This one also has an HDMI port, so you can plug it into your, your uh, TV at home and watch the full high-resolution video. Uh, I don't know how many people actually do that. I think a lot of people take a lot of video and then what you they know, do I with it. Is part of that though, it's like the uh, remember your friends used to go on vacation and they take those horrible slides, <laughs> and you'd have to go to your <laughs> friend's house and and watch the the horrible horrible like you know bad camping trip slides. And they weren't. It wasn't a fun trip. No. And the slides are even more excruciating, yes. actually. And, and remember those uh, fold-up slideshow screens? Yes, I do. Yeah, those were always a load From, of fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My grandparents had one of those, and I remember we went on a big trip. And, and, you know, as a kid, I wasn't really into the trip. Certainly wasn't into watching the slideshow no. later. Yeah, if you didn't want to be on the trip, if you weren't on the trip, no one wants to see that. And, uh, and, so and don't and even make if your you, family members watch that yeah, video. <laughs> yeah, and, and I can't say enough about uh, if you are going to make your family members watch the video, maybe edit it down a little bit. Get, get the highlights. Give me the 10-minute YouTube version, and I might wade through that. Um, so those those are a lot of fun. A lot of folks are finding that the the stand the handheld video cameras, little pocket cameras, are real popular gift items this year. Yeah. The other thing that's really popular this year are the smartphones. There are a lot of great smartphones out there that are just miles ahead of where we were even a year ago. Yeah. Now, of course, everybody has an iPhone. A lot of folks have the iPhone. It's got 22% of the market share in the smartphone world. And it's actually kind of amazing that Apple could go from 0 to 22 in just a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, so really, it's the phone to beat in a lot of ways. And what we're seeing in the products that are coming out over the last couple of months is exactly that. We're trying to compete with the iPhone. People are trying to give them the money. And the biggest space we've seen trying to compete with the iPhone is both in a phone and in an operating system itself. This is the Motorola Droid. And the Motorola Droid came out, of course, the commercials we've seen over the last few weeks are just phenomenal with everyone with everyone trying to, you know, the droid does this, the droid does that, and all of the things the droid does. Uh, and this phone, I like its really solid design. Mm -hmm. It's really rugged. It's a durable phone, not like those, some of the flimsy, more flimsy phones. You tap yeah, on the it, keys. It feels and like, you, a, like a, <clears throat> it's, it's heavy for its size, actually. Pretty I'm hefty. Amazed. Pretty hefty. It's still fairly slim, but it is a little, it does feel a little bit heavier. It's got a brilliant display. It's got mm -hmm. a great camera. And the new Google Android operating system, one of the things that I keep telling folks that I like, I love about this phone is it actually has navigation that gives you directions as you go. So it gives you real-time guidance as opposed to our iPhones give us turn-by-turn -turn directions. So it's like a GPS navigator. It's like a GPS system. And you know, the folks at TomTom Tom and Garmin have to be shaking in their boots because, uh, you know, they had that market cornered. And yeah. now all of a sudden we have the ability to get real-time traffic, real-time guidance on a phone. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason that happened... You know, Google's been running around with these cars and mapping all the roads, taking pictures of all of them. They now own their own maps mm -hmm. rather than having to license it yeah. from Telemav or NapQuest. And now they can actually take this, uh, NapTech, they can actually take this data that they own and use it for the actual real-time guidance. So you're seeing that on the on the Droid phone, the new Droid 2.0 phone, you can actually see the real-time guidance, the real-time navigation. So um, these are some slick phones uh, on the Google Android uh, platform. Folks, one of the arguments I hear a lot of is, well, there aren't as many apps out there for it. Well, true, but, make you them. know, well, sure, make one with you. I mean, and there are a lot of, they're now talking to us. 
Uh, there are a lot of great apps available for the Android platform. A lot of great developers, even here locally in Portland, there are a lot of great Android developers. But uh, you know, I say look at the App Store for the Droid platform. There's some, you know, a couple thousand as opposed to hundreds of thousands available. Uh, but of the couple thousand apps, is there, are you missing anything? Yeah. You know, there's how many tip calculators do we need? How many, you know, crazy word games that I can't figure out do we need? How many information, how many H1N1 apps do I really need? You know, one's probably good. Well, you know, my other question is when the iPhone first came out, how many apps were there for the iPhone? True. How long has the Android been on the market? Uh, yeah, and we're talking months versus years. Exactly. So, I mean, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying one platform is better than the other. I think, you know, buying a smartphone comes down to the cellular carrier. Does it work in your area? That's yeah. often a big issue. Some people are locked into service plans. Or they have companies that require certain different options. Uh, you know, what do you want in a phone? Some mm -hmm. people need a need a tactile keyboard. Yeah. Other people prefer the touchscreen. So, uh, I really really recommend people try it out, go to the store, and a lot of phones have a 14-day return policy. You know, buy it the 20th of December, give it as a Christmas gift, return it by the first of the year. If they don't like it, they can get something else. Yeah. You really don't have to feel like you're locked into a, a particular particular avenue. So what else? If we're not looking for a droid phone, what do we have? Well, the BlackBerry Storm, um, you know, you're laughing, but the the original Storm was a piece of junk. I'll hand that yeah. to you. Uh, seriously, it was just a bad phone. And this is the Storm 2. And you're not going to be able to see on camera, but when you touch the phone, it actually responds to you. It's a little more in line with the iPhone as far as the touch interface, mm -hmm. as opposed to the previous one was, let's bang on the screen, and maybe it'll but push a letter. But you can feel the, the screen give. That's interesting. It gives a little bit, so it's got that response that's, yeah. that's nice. But it's that's balanced out a little bit, whereas before... It was you really had to press hard, and my fingers got sore just pushing on the, you know, trying to tap through the buttons. This one, I think they've improved it a lot better. The operating system is less buggy. They've really cleaned it up all yeah. around. And actually, if you're an avid BlackBerry user, you want the touch screen. I think it's a solid phone. It's actually something to check out. Whereas last year, this time, I was saying, don't even bother. You know, don't I'm amazed bother. because the, they are the Blackberries I've seen have not been this um, pleasantly tactile. Yeah, yeah, and again, the the previous version of the Storm uh, was just ridiculous. It, it wasn't even worth the time. So BlackBerry Storm 2, I think, is actually worth taking a second look. If you're on the Verizon network, it's certainly a decent phone. Uh, switching over to Sprint, everyone's heard about the Palm Pre. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a $200 phone. Uh, it runs the WebOS operating system. If you want a cheaper phone that is not the slider feature, which some people feel is a little bit cheap, this slide you know, is a little mm -hmm. bit plasticky, feels kind of uh, uh, rickety, the Pixie is just out. It's 100 bucks. It's very similar to this in shape, uh -huh. but it's all one design. It's a candy shell, so candy bar it, design. the keyboard? The keyboard's it's down at the, at the bottom, bottom. The screen's at the top. It doesn't slide out. It actually just occupies the entire uh, surface area of the phone, and it's a hundred dollar phone as opposed to two hundred dollars. So it just doesn't have this. So the keyboard would just be right. Yeah, there. the keyboard's just kind of built into it. And the Pixie is available now from Sprint. It's actually a, a decent phone. The Pixie is. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring one today. Uh, the Palm Pre, I really like it, but mm -hmm. it takes some getting used to. Uh, I think from an operating standpoint, I much it looks prefer like a makeup compact. It does, though. yeah. It does and actually, kind of like it's got a, a mirror on the sleep. back if you want to, you know. Check it, <gasps> it does. I didn't even realize that's that. actually uh, they they do that. Um, the mirror the mirror on the back is so that you can see <laughs> yourself when you're taking when you're a picture. Doing a picture. Although nice. you could also do it to maybe touch up your yeah, makeup. That's so. fantastic. It's kind of fun. And one last phone. Uh, it's not actually a little phone. It's a Twitter device. Oh. This is the Twitter Peak, and it's kind of a funny little Wait, device. Wait, so this device is for just for Twitter? Just for Twitter. And it's actually, it's interesting because... What's the connectivity? It, it runs on uh, one of the wireless carriers. I want to say it's Sprint, but don't quote me on that. Okay. And this device only tweets. Now... I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I have one of these fancy smartphones. I have no, I'm the... I'm thinking I love Twitter, but go ahead. All right, well. <laughs> Cam lives Twitter. But this, uh, they made them first for email. The nice mm -hmm. thing about this phone, it's, it's a little bit slick in the fact that you pay $200 for the device and unlimited service. Mm -hmm. So it runs over a, a wireless network. And again, I want to say it's Sprint network. It's the same thing the Amazon uh, you know, Kindle book reader. It kind of works in the background. You don't think about it. Uh, this runs, and it'll download your tweets. I found it to be a little bit slow. I don't know what it is. Uh, you're using yeah. the touch wheel on the side. There's a the scroll oh, wheel on the side, go. and then you tap it in when you want okay. to, to view a tweet or reply. It's oh. got my account on there, so go ahead and send a tweet. That'd be fun. 
Uh, but I found a couple of applications for this. If you're a business or a brand that transfers control of the of the Twitter stream from different people, I could totally see you using it for, hey, you're tweeting now. Here's the device. You've kind of got the, the, the suitcase, if you will, the briefcase of nuclear codes. You've got the Twitter command. You roll with it, punch out. I'm scared of what you're saying. <laughs> I'm not even sure I want to. <laughs> Alas. Do, do, do. So uh, back to the... Well, I'm just uh, not good at using this. It does take a little bit of getting used to yeah. it. And like I said, it's a little bit slow on the uptake. So it's kind of like you'll send the tweet and the folks watching at home now will read it in about an hour. Yeah, and people are thinking, why does it take Cammy so long to type a tweet? There's only 140 so would you characters. Like, would, would, you like, would you like something you're more used to? Yes. Here, I can't even send this. Um, you know, I just, I have to finish. Oh, she has to finish. Now she has to finish. Because it well, would be, like, really anticlimactic if I didn't send While it. she's finishing, I will, uh, I'll go on and, and show folks the next product. Um, this is kind of exciting technology, and I say that it's not quite ready for prime time, but I think it's a fun thing to watch. Uh, it's the PowerMac cordless charger. How do you make it send? You hit the little button in there. And then you scroll down to the send tweet. This is uh, yeah. It's this it's is a, very complicated. This I is just, a cord. Yeah. I think it takes. I think it definitely. <laughs> I think it definitely takes some getting used to. We'll okay. scroll down to the send. We'll send this, and um, uh, maybe the person that is uh, that received that tweet will respond to us. Uh, this is the power mat, and the mm -hmm. power mat is two pieces. It's a mat. There's two versions. This mm -hmm. is the office version here. There's also a fold-up version that you can travel with. Uh, and then it, it requires little receivers. This is the case for an iPhone 3G. Mm -hmm. So you slide it onto the back of your iPhone. This is my old iPhone 3G because, of course, you know you have to upgrade to the 3GS. Uh, it has a receiver on the back of it. It plugs into the iPhone through the dock connector on the bottom of the case. And then when you're ready to charge it, you just set it on the base. Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard it. And it'll make a little tweet sound. It'll go, Bruh. just like so. Hmm. And that means that it's charging. So it's actually charging the iPhone right now. And the idea is you, when you slide it onto there, it just goes, Bloop. Oh, yeah. Like so. And you can actually get multiple charging bays. You can get one for the Nintendo DS. Like I've got my Nintendo DS that I've used as a camera here. And... The nice thing is it's got these, so it's got these bases, these um, these adapters that you plug into the back of them. Mm -hmm. This one, for example, is a, uh, for the, specifically for the Nintendo DS, it plugs into the power connector in the back, and then when I'm ready, all I have to do is plug it onto, just set it onto the tray. It'll make the little bloop noise. I can put it up, I can take it away, and it'll start charging that device. They also send you, when you get this device, it's about 200 bucks. they also send you a kit full of adapters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Dr. Normal loves adapters. For just different devices? They're different, they're different plugs. This is the micro. You've got the Nintendo, Sony, LG. There's even an Apple iPod connector here. And these are slick because you can plug them into these little cubes. Mm -hmm. And then these little cubes act as a now? universal charger. So here's one that could plug into my Palm Pre, for example. And I just set it on the base like so. And it's charging that device. See, we charge our devices, uh, our iPhones, on their bedside tables. This mm -hmm. would be perfect. Yeah, I, I will say it, it's a good concept, mm -hmm. but until they get these adapters, you know, am I going to travel with one of these versus the small brick that just plugs into any standard outlet? Well, no, outlet? that's what I'm thinking. For home use, if you've got more than one device to charge, that's I think, a good I, thing, but I think not it's for getting, travel. I think it's getting to the point where... It's getting to the point where it's exciting technology, and I think it's definitely something to watch. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that I'd run out and buy that this this year, but it's definitely something that we should keep an eye on, and we'll probably find that in the coming years they'll make the receiving tips a little bit smaller. They'll they'll take up a lot less space. Mm -hmm. uh, cordless charging will become more ubiquitous. It'll be something that you come to your hotel room and there's a cordless they pad. Just have them there. You just set it on yeah. the base, and you don't need to have a particular type of cordless charging. That everything is kind of compatible with each other. So I think it's definitely the the technology is really cool. It's got a G Wiz factor to it. Mm -hmm. Is this something that we all need to run out and buy? I like the G-Wiz factor. Not. The G-Wiz factor is a lot of fun. So what's this? Is this the last thing we have? This is, uh, well, second to last, but okay. this is, uh, it looks like a bit of earmuffs, but this is actually by, uh, this is called the Halo, mm -hmm. and it's a Jabra device. It's a Bluetooth headset, but it also works as earphones, hmm. and it has a microphone built into it, so you can use it as a headset. It looks extremely dorky. Yeah. But it's actually very practical because now you've got these earmuffs and you don't have a cord. Mm -hmm. So I could be listening to my iPhone. I don't actually need 
uh, any cables or anything running to this device. Yeah. I charge it with the standard micro USB, and I can listen to music. I can be walking around the house. I can have my iPhone in my pocket. It's great for working out. I don't know that you'd be running a marathon with it, but perhaps on the treadmill or something like that, yeah. you can listen to music, not have to worry about the cord getting, getting fumbled up or, or mixed up around. Uh, and again, it's a great fashion statement as well. <laughs> so, I mean, so does it have, if you're using it with your iPhone, does it have um, a click? To answer, click. It, it, it does. It's got a bu- one button on the side uh-huh. uh, where you can push that button to answer. It's also got a volume control so you can oh, slide nice. up and down the volume, although it makes an annoying beep when it goes up and down. Mm-hmm. It goes bloop, 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 bloop. Like it wants to make and sure you like, know what you're doing. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I couldn't hear the music getting louder, something like that, but maybe there's a way to turn that off. I'm not sure. And then it is somewhat collapsible. You can just snap it off, and I always feel like I'm going to break it when I do this. It sounds and like it just, you're breaking it, it. Yeah, it does. It says fold here. See, I left that sticker on there so nice. I can remind myself that you actually fold there. And then, so it's somewhat collapsible. Um, mm-hmm. Probably not going to throw that in your pocket, but it's a little more portable, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, for those that need a pair of over the ear headphones and maybe you don't handle the ear buffs, uh, mm-hmm. earmuffs, uh, earbuds, Buds. excuse me, that's the mm-hmm. word I'm looking for. Yeah. Uh, so that's a kind of a cute option there. And the last thing. Oh. Is the Frame Wizard? Yeah, we've got the Strange Love Live logo on it now, but I can actually go and show some fun things. And we had this on the show last night for those that watched live at seven. And I can go back to the main menu, and I can go to the option that is the Frame Wizard. And the Frame Wizard is both a frame itself; it's also software, and the software will allow you to. Uh, create scenes such as this one. You take a still photo, so in this case, the fence scene with the with the with the snow in the background and the mm-hmm. tree, and you can add the effect of the snow onto the front of it. You, you can do this also with your own photos. You do this with your own photos. So in this oh, particular case, they've creepy. animated. They've I'm animated. Not sure I'm down with the blinking children. <laughs> they've <but>. animated <laughs> the waves, and and you can actually add. These are different eyes, so your kid may have blue eyes. These are brown. Mm-hmm. So you can actually add eyes to this, and then they'll blink. Uh, I'm with you. A little bit creepy. <laughs> this one's kind of fun. This is a caboose like the in the middle of the one. winter. I do like the the snow. snow scene. The bubbles, uh, again with the blinking eyes. Uh, the not, blinking eyes not really sure. freaks me out. Here's another snow scene. This is a mountain scene. Mm-hmm. The, I've never seen a snowflake that actually looks like that. These no. are the big flakes yeah. that you see in a kindergarten uh, book. Uh, oh, this is the Stephanie picture Aaron. that I took of Stephanie and Aaron uh, from Live at 7. Confetti during the party. Mm-hmm. And then you can go even one step further and you can get... Uh, like so? There we go. Oh, now I'll, I'll just hold that there. Uh, this is a this is a shot of Stephanie and Aaron, and then here we have the Live at 7 logo. Nice. We've added a little bit of frost behind it, and, of course, the snow effect again. Uh, so it's just a little bit fun. Again, you can take any photo. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can run the software. It's both PC and Mac compatible. You can take the software. You can add the effects and things. i got to say, though, be careful about going overboard. It's one of those things where too much of this can be a little crazy. This is a fairly simple scene. We frosted the borders. We've got snow falling down. But it looks like a Christmas card. That's it's, appropriate. Yeah. But it's when you go a little bit overboard. I'm with you. The children blinking, kind of creepy, kind of. Show us the children blinking. Doctor, we'll I think would like that to see the children. Here's blinking the uh, eyes. here's the children blinking with the eyes. This is just literally just a little bit crazy here. You can see in on the screen there the children are blinking, and you just have to think, yeah. I mean, the, I mean waves, the waves. The waves is a cool fact. Yeah, that's I like that, but, but the, blinking, the blinking, yeah, really not so much. Me. And maybe it's just I don't know. The blinking is. So there's some fun cool. scenes. The caboose with the with the snow we saw earlier. Uh, the children and the bubbles again. We've got blinking eyes there, which is kind of creepy. I feel really like sure. Harry Potter gone too far. Yeah, kind of. a little bit extreme. Yeah. The, and then these are some fun scenes, you know. So you can really create your own scenes. There's confetti. There's all sorts of other things you can do with it. Uh, and then again, it comes with the software. You do what you want to do with it. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a great little experiment. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's fun to play around with. But please, in moderation, folks. Let's have, not have go these crazy come with down it. In price because I remember looking at these a couple years ago, and they were. Uh, prohibitively expensive. They're they're expensive in the couple hundred dollar range. Mm-hmm. You're going to pay probably about a hundred dollar low hundreds for a, a decent photo frame. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact that you're paying about two hundred dollars for a frame that has this software built into it. This will also, as a photo frame, it'll play music, it'll do videos. So by Frame Wizard, it's actually a fairly decent frame as mm-hmm. photo frames go. Uh, the fact that it comes with the software and you can do some cute animation if you play around with it and do it right i think can also be um can be somewhat effective can be somewhat fun so those are some fun uh holiday gadgets some fun gifts and uh you know a lot of folks ask me well what am i gonna buy for christmas this year i have no idea (laughs) 
I really have no idea. Yeah. Any suggestions? What do you want for Christmas, Cammie? Um, um, I would like everyone to tune into and donate to 30 Hour Day. That's 30 Hour I, Day? That's what I'd like for Christmas. Is that exciting or what? I, I, I still have no <laughs> idea how you and Rick are going to stay up for 30 hours. Yeah, no. Yeah. I don't mm. know that. I'm going to be down. I'm going to check in on you. You're going to be with us for about I'm gonna 24 be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be 30 hours. The yeah. first 24 hours. And then, this is pretty exciting. We can announce this, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we can announce this. Uh, I am hosting a viewing party in Seattle. Yes. So I'll be here for the first 24 hours, get on a plane, head back to Seattle, and then there'll be a 30-hour day viewing party in Seattle. For those of you who don't know what 30-hour day is, uh, Rick Terozzi of the Silicon Florist and I uh, have put together this crazy idea to live stream a telethon for 30 hours with the help of uh, the fantastic producer, Dr. Normal, and so many other people that I couldn't even begin to mention it. To raise money and awareness for some charities here in Portland. But Rick thought maybe we should branch out a little bit. And so we're going to be having uh, people with viewing parties all over the country, hopefully all over the world. Brian is going to have one of those. He's going to be with us for the first 24 hours of the of the telethon. And then he's going to head up to Seattle where he's going to be having his uh, annual Christmas party. Mm-hmm. And we thought, what better excuse? We'll raise some money up there and mm-hmm. uh, contribute to the cause. Of course, uh, I think we're going to donate to Northwest Harmouth, which is Fantastic. equivalent to the Oregon Oregon Food Bank, and uh, you know maybe find a couple of other charities. But bring some people in. We'll have some fun, some drinks. Uh, it'll be sort of as if we're there in spirit. So mm-hmm. it'll be a lot of fun. And of course, we'll uh, we'll check in with the live stream and, and wave hello to everyone. So that'll be fun. Thirty hour day is uh, December eighteenth. Thirty hour day dot Nineteenth. That's right. Very cool. 30hourday.org. Now, I think we're going to go ahead and point you over to Brian on Twitter at BMW on Twitter, mm-hmm. tech.brianwestbrook.com right. on the, the blog. internet. Absolutely. Um, 30 hour day is the 30hourday.org. 30hourday.org is the 30 hour day website. And, you know, I think with that, we want to say happy holidays, happy Thanksgiving. Is coming up incredibly soon. Absolutely, just uh, what next week? Next week, we've got less the, than a week from now. We've got our entire fam- extended family coming up for Thanksgiving, and I'm just sort of like, I'm going to go into my gadget room and just like and hide. Yeah, like <laughs> charge things or something. I don't know. I'm we've just decided like, right. to have a very tiny family Thanksgiving this year. It's so. Probably smart. Yeah, we. Just I might need, come crash if we need a know, downtime. Things get crazy. I'll come stop by. Yeah, that would be fun. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. I hope that you'll join us for after hours, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.